welcome to basics of noise and its measurement. In the last module, we were discussing the nature of sound, how it behaves as a wave <coughs> and how it follows all the rules of the wave uh, like any other regular wave. What we are going to discuss today about is uh, how do we the unit of uh, sound and in that context we will introduce the decibel scale. But before I talk about this term called the decibel scale, I wanted to provide a context. First we will look at this picture. So, what the picture shows is that there is a source which is emitting sound in this case uh, as I am talking for instance, I am talking. So, my throat is emitting sound and this sound travels from point A to point B. In this case, it is moving from my mouth to the microphone. So, that is point A, that is point B. So, it is actually propagating in medium. So, it is propagating in medium. Okay. So, that is the second thing. So, you have a source and you have a medium and then finally, <coughs> there is a sensor. Let us say I am talking in a room and there is a student sitting in my class and that student is listening. So, his ears or her ears are acting as sensors and uh, that. So, that is the third uh, point in the system, the receiver or the sensor. The sensor could be a human being it could be a microphone, it could be a measuring equipment or whatever. So, you have a source, you have a medium and you have a receiver. So, when we are talking about sound, uh, it could be in one of these contexts that when we are trying to measure sound, we may be interested in understanding how many watts of sound energy is being emitted by the source in this case my throat. And if our interest lies in that, that how many watts of energy are being emitted, then what we are trying to measure is how many, what is the power of that source, what is the power of that source from an acoustical standpoint. The other uh, interest could be that as sound is traveling from point A to point B, uh, part of it is getting uh, absorbed, part of it is getting transferred. So, we may be interested in knowing how much sound is getting passing through a particular cross sectional area in terms of uh, how, how much power is flowing per unit cross sectional area. Uh, so, that is uh, that brings in the notion of intensity which is this one. So, here <coughs> the units would be for the intensity would be watts per square meter. And then the third uh, point of interest would be that when sound hits my eardrums or a microphone, uh, it uh, hits it as a pressure wave. So, what my eardrum senses or a microphone senses is the pressure. So, at the receiver end, I may be interested in measuring the pressure fluctuation caused due to propagation of sound. So, in that particular case, we may be interested in measuring sound in terms of pascals. So, we can measure sound in terms of watts, we can measure sound in terms of intensity that is watts per square meter or we can also measure sound in terms of pressure fluctuations and that is pascals. <coughs> so, these are the three broad uh, concepts in uh, in which we measure sound we we can measure it as watts we can measure it as intensity we can measure it as pascals so the next thing i wanted to introduce you is the importance of a logarithmic scale whenever we are talking about sound so uh, for that let's look at this uh, picture so consider this So, suppose I am 
clotting sound. Suppose there is a speaker, so it is emitting sound and then I have a microphone here and this microphone is measuring pressure, pressure fluctuation okay? and it measures pressure as a function of time. So, I am plotting P as a function of time and it may be measuring this. Okay. So, and suppose this is a instead of speaker, suppose instead of speaker, so case 1 was a speaker, case 2 was a person who is talking at a normal amplitude level, case 3 could be a typewriter, case 4 could be let us say a mosquito 1 meter away, case 5 could be a car passing by. Okay. So, in one of the earlier classes, we had seen that uh, the pressures which were generated by uh, all these people for a mosquito, it would be something in this range 20 micro Pascals. Okay. So, I am going to write it down 20 micro Pascals. Then if I am talking uh, normally, then it could be 0 0.002, 2.02 02 Pascals. If there is a TV or a speaker, then it could be 0 0.02 Pascals. If there is a car moving 10 meters away, then it could be 0 0.02, 2.2 2 Pascals and so on and so forth. Okay. So, I will just write down these numbers. So, in case of a person, it could be 0 0.02, typical pressure level would be 0 0.02 Pascals. In case of a mosquito, it will be 2 into 10 to the power of minus 5 Pascals. If it is a typewriter or something like that, or let us look at a TV then it would be something in the range of 0 0.2 Pascals. If it is a car, then it would be again something like 0 0.2 Pascals. So, these are some broad numbers, <coughs> but the point what I am trying to make is that if I have to plot all these values on the same y axis. So, this is my time. Let us say this is my mosquito. So, this is 2 into 10 to the power of minus 5 Pascals, this is my pressure. Then if I have to plot the next number, let us say this is a person who is talking and uh, so that is 0 0.02 and if I have to plot 0 0.02, if this is this distance, this distance corresponds to 2 uh, into 10 to the power of minus 5 Pascals or 20 micro Pascals. Then if I have to plot a value of 0 0.02, it will lie way outside the screen. Maybe it will be a 10 meter long screen or a 1 meter long screen and then that is how I will get to the 0 0.02 level. If I have to plot this value of 0 0.2 and also 20 micro Pascals on the same y scale, then the scale may be tens of meters long. If I have to plot a, <coughs> a pressure level of 20 micro Pascals, and also let us say 60 micro Pascals because sound can go as high as that also. Then maybe my y axis or the vertical axis may be as high as 1 kilometer. So, the point what I am trying to make is that because we have to cover a very large number an extremely large range of pressures on the same graph an extremely large uh, range and this range spans over several orders of magnitudes. 
So, physically it becomes not possible or uh, impractical to plot everything using a linear scale. So, we do not use So, we do not use a linear scale <coughs> to plot pressures because uh, at least in context of sound <coughs> because it can make things impractical or we have to have a very large uh, width of the paper. So, that is one reason. So, y axis I cannot plot because uh, on a linear scale because the paper size becomes extremely long. Now, let us look at uh, frequencies. So, a lot of times when we make plots for uh, uh, sound, our plots are of this nature, our x axis is time and our y axis is pressure, right. And I said that this is not practical if I have to do in a linear scale. So, I plot pressure in a logarithmic scale. Okay. Now, this is typically our raw data. Raw data. So, when I take a microphone, I do measurement. What I essentially measure is pressure as a function of time. But a lot of times, what I do is, I transform this raw data into a different type of plot. So, again I am plotting pressure on a log scale. So, here I am plotting pressure, but instead of time I plot frequency, I plot frequency uh, and the frequency can range from typical hearing range is 20 hertz to 20000 hertz okay so it's 20 kilo 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz that's a typical audible frequency range and again if i have to plot all these 20 hertz 40 hertz 60 hertz 80 hertz and if i have to go up to 20000 i have to make my x axis extremely long so this is the first reason why we also do not plot frequency typically we do not plot it on linear scale especially, uh, especially if uh, we have to cover the entire spectrum audio, uh, audio spectrum which is 20 to 20 kilohertz. If I am just interested in let us say 1000 to 2000 hertz, I am okay with linear scale, but if I am interested in a very large bandwidth let us say 20 to 20 kilohertz or 20 to 1000 hertz, then it becomes impractical to have a linear scale. So, in that case again whenever we use frequency on the y axis then we again use a log scale. Okay. So, this is the first reason why we use a log scale for plotting graphs for frequencies uh, in context of frequency as well as in context of pressures. But there is another rain, uh, reason which relates to our perception and that is what I am going to talk about next. So, for that I will conduct a small listening experiment. So, before I <coughs> do this listening experiment just wanted to preface it with a couple of comments. So, it turns out that our ears are sensitive to small fluctuations in frequency at low frequencies and when I increase the frequency significantly and if I use the same uh, magnitude of fluctuations in frequency at uh, mean values higher mean values of uh, frequencies uh, then there our ears are not that sensitive. In another word, suppose I play a tone of 400 hertz and I play it, my ear listens to it. Then I play a tone which is 500 hertz. 
So, 500 hertz is 100 hertz more than 400. My ear will be able to distinguish between a 400 hertz and a 500 hertz tone. Now, I do a similar experiment, but instead of 400 hertz, I play a 4000 hertz tone. So, my ear listens to it and again I play another tone which is 4100 hertz tone. So, instead of 500, uh, you know, so I have just increased that frequency by 100 more hertz and we will play this, uh, these tones and what you will perceive is I think that the difference between 4000 and 4100 will be perceived as much lesser compared to between 400 and 500. And then we will do the same experiment at 10000 and 10100 hertz and there the difference will be you would not be able to uh, probably appreciate the difference at all. So, what that means is that our ears are sensitive to frequencies on a proportional scale or on a logarithmic scale. So, with that preface I wanted to play these tones. So, this is the 400 hertz tone. and this is the 500 hertz tone. So, it is clearly different and the difference between these two tones is of 100 hertz and the base frequency is 400 hertz. Now, you play a 4000 hertz tone. <coughs> and this is 4100. So, it sounds slightly different 4000 and 4100. Here the difference is still 100, but that 100 hertz difference does not play a much big role in terms of changing the perception. And now I will play the 10000 hertz. And this is a 10100 hertz tone. And for these, you will not sense any difference, a barely minimal difference if your ears are really sharp. So, what this experiment, small experiment shows is that our ears listen or uh, can identify frequencies and resolve frequencies on a logarithmic scale or on a proportional scale. So, that is the physical reason why we use a log scale for uh, frequency. For a similar reason, we also use uh, a log scale to depict pressure besides the reason of practicality that our ears are also sensitive to changes in pressure on a log scale, not on a linear scale. Because again, I mean we have evolved in a way that we can sense very large uh, uh, changes in pressure in terms of order of magnitudes. So, for both these reasons, for reasons of practicality that because the paper size will become very large and also because of reasons related to perception that our ears are more or less tuned to changes in frequencies and changes in pressures on a logarithmic scale. We use a log scale to plot uh, pressures. So, with that uh, I am going to introduce this decibel scale and I am going to introduce this decibel scale for all the three variables which I had talked about sound power level and it is designated as L w and it is defined as the decibels in for if I have to measure power are defined as 10 log 10 of the value of watts which is being emitted by the source divided by reference power and the value of reference power for air is assumed to be uh, 1 picowatt. So, that is how many decibels if I have to calculate sound power level. Then if I have sound intensity level S i l or L i. So, this is L i is a industry standard terminology then it is defined as 10 log 10 i divided by reference value of intensity and the reference value of intensity is again 1 picowatts per square meters. So, that sound power level and that sound intensity level 
and then finally, I have sound pressure level and sound pressure level is defined which is termed as L p is defined as not 10 log, but 20 log or actually 10 log of squares of pressure divided by square of reference pressure and if I take the square out then it becomes 20 log 10 p over p ref and here p is the RMS pressure it is the RMS pressure root mean square value of the pressure. So, typically when I talk the pressure is fluctuating up and down all over the place. So, whatever sample I have of sound I have to break it up into individual points as a function of time and then I take the squares of each of these values take the average of these squares and then take the square root and through that I get the RMS value of the pressure and then put that in this particular relation 20 log 10 p over p ref and I get uh, the sound pressure level. So, please remember that these values reference values for wattage intensity and pressures they are applicable if the medium is air if the medium is water then these reference values change, but for air the values for wattage are 1 picowatts for intensity 1 picowatts per square meters and for pressure it is 20 micro Pascals. So, that is uh, the thing and what this chart shows is the calculation of uh, decibels corresponding to different values of uh, pressures. So, again for auditory threshold 20 micro Pascals it corresponds to 0 dB very comb room 30 decibels corresponding to 6.32 times 10 to the power of minus 4 Pascals if I have a TV running about 0 0.02 Pascals, so these are some guesstimate approximate values. So, 0 0.02 Pascals corresponding to 60 dB. If uh, there is a passenger car, it is about 60 to 80 dB and so on and so forth. So, you can calculate decibels uh, using these relations. And then uh, lastly, I wanted to share this information with you because these three terms L w, L i and L p these are very popular, but in industry there are dozens of other uh, decibel uh, scales and some of these are also related to acceleration L a, velocity L v, force L f, uh, you know energy density L w, but here w is lower case not upper case, energy is L e and then you have a bunch of more uh, decibel scales and their uh, brief descriptions are given and there are even more maybe two dozen more as far as I know and maybe even more than that and all of them are related to uh, decibel scales. So, the number of decibel scales is extremely large, but uh, at least in context of sound these three decibel scales are more popular. So, it is at least definitely you should know about these and then some other decibel scales. Uh, like L A, L A 10, L A 90 these are also somewhat popular, but once you know the decibel scale concept you can easily apply that concept to understand these other decibel scales. So, with this we conclude this particular module and I look forward you to having you in the next lecture. Thanks.